What up? I'm Evan McKinnon, Toronto tattooer. Been tattooing since 2003, and I've loved wrestling my whole life. <laughs> Goldberg. This tattoo, by far, is one of the most recognizable tattoos, I think. Goldberg first came onto the scene, he was a tear. I think he was just so different when it came to being this unknown nobody, to just tearing through the WCW. Like he was undefeated for a really, really long time, right up to the point he, you know, went against Hollywood Hulk Hogan on Monday Night Nitro and won the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. I remember being in high school and people drawing it on their textbooks and every tough guy wanted this tattoo. I mean, and it was great for Goldberg. There's only so many tribal Goldberg tattoos you can do in your, in your lifetime without ever wanting to see it again. I would never put it on my body personally. I think it's kind of like a cop-out tattoo. This tattoo itself, it's very well balanced. Just the fact of how it sits on the shoulder, the four kind of sharp points kind of going up to the, the neck. It is a nice tattoo for the spot of the body. If you don't have that shoulder kind of mass muscle, it might not look the same on your body if you get it. And I mean, it's a Goldberg tattoo. If you're a fan of Goldberg, then get it. It fits his persona, it fit who he was, it fit what he did in the industry. And that's like, it's, it screams Goldberg when you see it, that's why it is the Goldberg tattoo. Oh, Bam Bam Bigelow. He's one of those guys where you look at Bam Bam Bigelow and you're like, damn, his freaking skull is tattooed, you know? Like flames on his head, flames on his actual gear, it's like a big fireball of just impact of rage. But that was one of the first skull tattoos I think I've ever witnessed when I was a kid, just being like, oh my God, is that real? I've tattooed like the side of the head uh, and I've tattooed the back of the head. Um, on the actual top of the head, not yet, um, but I would I would think that it's in, in the same ballpark when it comes to tattooing there. It's a little tender. Like personally, I got the side of my head tattooed and it's not fun, but I mean, no pain, no gain, right? I find that anybody that comes in the door, the pressure is always a little high um, just because you don't want to mess up a tattoo. Um, but on the skull and on a guy like Bam Bam Bigelow, I think the pressure might be a little higher just because the intimidation factor is a bit there. I think it might be a little bit of a cover-up. So there's a lot of heavy black kind of shaded in the front of his forehead, kind of going up into um, his hairline. But there's really no good transition in from the black to like the yellow and orange and red. And then you can kind of see a faded outline of something else. It's kind of hard to say what kind of style that is. I would think it's your early, late 80s, early 90s kind of like era of tattoo. I don't know if there's an actual name for it. You know, kind of on the biker side of style of tattoo. Standard traditional eagle with the wings out. Minimal color and on the forearm. His upper shoulder, he has a panther head and panther heads are the same thing. It's like traditional black, you know, you can't go wrong with that, like a panther head if you want to cover up. I don't know if it is a cover-up. I mean, it's not exactly the best tattoo. I mean, he's got the, the standard placements of tattoos that you would get from that era of like the 80s, 90s, even 70s. <laughs> DDP, Diamond Dallas Page. He's got some really, really bad skin, I think. They're old, combination with, I guess, his age. They don't look the best, but maybe at some point in his life they they looked all right. I think his style of tattoos borderline that like mid 90-ish 
look with the eight ball, like Hellcat looking face and the playing cards. I mean, that hot rod mentality, I think, with the look of his tattoos. Placement wise, uh, I find on that part of the body, on his upper arms, like it, it looks all right there. Personally, if I were to do it, I would have put it a little higher up. I mean, they're, they're not really well done. Um, they are bold, but they could have maybe been done better. Rey Mysterio's tattoos overall, um, you can tell that over the years, they got better and better and better. When he first started, standard tribal from the 90s, the 619, I'm pretty sure that's San Diego. A lot of crosses, very religious, I think. Has a higher power of some sort. I think the f the Phoenix imagery on his mask come across onto his chest with the Mexican on his stomach. He's very proud from with his heritage and it has a really Mayan kind of feel to it, I think. His back piece, I can see why people would say it kind of looks like a Brock Lesnar kind of tattoo, but it really doesn't because Brock Lesnar's back piece is a big giant skull and then his is just the skull spine and then very kind of almost bio mech. From what I know about luchadors, like their mask is everything. When you demask a luchador, that's heartbreaking for them. He's one of the, the smallest wrestlers in like a giant's world. And he still holds up. He brought the luchador kind of style into the WCW slash WWE. Overall, his tattoos, you know, got better with age.